The regions of France are so diverse, it's really worth getting out of Paris and exploring. You can go all over the place and never taste the same thing twice. You get the Atlantic coast on one side, the mountains on the other, plains and sunny coastal areas on the Mediterranean. I'm taking a little trip. A shellfish sauce from the Loire served on fish mousseline. Vichyssoise, a smooth, chilled leek and potato soup inspired by the town of Vichy. Salade niçoise with olives, egg, tomatoes, and haricots verts is classic Nice. In the north, Flemish influences make beer special, and it's great for stewing beef, as in carbonade de boeuf. And from Strasbourg, onion tart, all the rage, and this is the easiest one I've ever made. We're going all over France without even leaving our kitchen. Armchair travel. This is kitchen travel. I'm going to a few regions of France today and I'm making specialties from those regions. It's a way of getting there without actually going. I'm starting with the sauce nantua, which is a shellfish sauce. It's got carrot in it and shallot as the first ingredients. The carrot will add sweetness and color to the sauce. I'm cutting the carrots into a fine dice because I'm going to saute them with the shallots. If you don't have any shallots, so of course use an onion. A little bit of butter. This recipe, the sauce Nantua, comes from Nantua and it uses normally crayfish. And it also is served normally with pike quenelles. A quenelle is a little dumpling. But I'm making it today a little differently. I'm using shrimp because it's easier to find and it's really quick. And I'm making fish mousseline because it's lighter and simpler. Poaching canals is quite a job. I'm using shrimp, and these are raw shrimp in their shells. What most people don't know is that the shells have so much flavor, and they go right in this sauce. I'm just turning the shrimp in here until it turns pink. I'm going to deglaze with cognac. You can leave it out if you don't have any. And now wine. I'm adding half a cup. bit of thyme and drop in my bay leaves. Also for color and for depth of flavor, I'm adding tomato paste because you want a very concentrated flavor. Some paprika and a pinch of cayenne pepper, just a pinch. Otherwise, now I can add some stock. This is fish stock. I want a cup and a half. You can use bought stock or you can make your own by simmering the bones and heads of fish. Fish heads have huge flavor. I'm going to add a little salt and pepper. Now just let that murmur away while I make my faux canals. This is turbot, which is a flat fish. It's not a river fish, it's an Atlantic fish, but it makes great little mousseline. That was about 12 ounces of fish. A cup of cream and one egg and a little salt. Now I'm just going to blitz it really, really quickly. Some parsley and I'm putting in tarragon too. I'm just going to stir them in right in this mixing bowl. And this is going to be a bain-marie, and that will make the cooking really gentle and even. Now back to my sauce. Now this gets blended, shells and all. 
Don't freak out. This is how it's meant to be. Into the blender. I'm just going to strain this into a saucepan. cream. I'm just going to reheat that. And while that's happening, get my mousseline. They look great. They're not dried out at all. Just still a bit almost glossy on top. And onto a plate. So cute. And now this amazing sauce shellfish flavored sauce. Just pool it around. Rich, wonderful sauce. Mm. Oh boy. That is real luxury Lyonnais style. My next city visit is to Nice and Vichy for Saladissoise. Vichy Swaz. I'm taking a tour of France without ever leaving my kitchen, making recipes from all different regions. I'm making Vichy Swaz, which is a potato and leek soup. So let me start with peeling these potatoes. In Vichy, the buildings are all wonderfully white and elegant. It's just like a little Paris. Okay, potatoes. An onion. Notice it's not being fried in butter first. That is very unusual. Almost all French soups start with butter and then frying an onion. There are two reasons for that. Well, I don't know what the inventor was thinking when he did it, but I can tell you why. One is because you want a light soup. If it's from Vichy, you want it spa-like, so you don't want any fat. And the other reason is because the soup is going to be cold. And so you don't want that taste. You want it all very fresh and just cooked all together in water. One rib of celery. I'm just cutting off the tops of the leeks because these aren't edible. I've cut them into rings and give them a rinse. I can start throwing things in the pot. Leeks. Celery. Potatoes and onions and in honor of a mineral water town, I'm covering just with mineral water. I mean, obviously use tap water if you don't have mineral water. A bit of salt and flavor. And that just needs to cook until everything is tender. getting pureed, so I want to make sure that they're very tender. Come here, you. A knife should go right through them. Yeah, no problem. I'm using an immersion blender, which is a very practical tool. I'm just going to strain this because just even though it's leeks and potatoes and onions, it can be very refined. There's just one last thing, and this is my favorite part. This fat-free, delicious, slimming soup includes a spot of cream. I love the leek and onion together. They give lots of flavor. And the potato, in addition to taste, gives beautiful, smooth texture. I'm going to let that cool, and then I'll put it in the fridge to chill.
This is probably one of the best known salads in France. Everybody knows salade niçoise. It's from Nice, of course. And it's niçoise because salade is feminine. And if it were something else masculine, it would be niçois. But niçoise in cooking generally means something with garlic in it and olives and anchovies, typical ingredients from the region. With salade niçoise, everyone fights over it all the time because everyone thinks they know what the exact ingredients are supposed to be and what the wrong ones are supposed to be. And here's my take on it. I believe in traditions, and I respect them. I also respect my appetite. I eat what I want. I'm going to make a dressing. Garlic, I know, is not disputed. And a spoonful of Dijon mustard. This emulsifies the sauce. A bit of tarragon vinegar. I just want a little lemon juice in it, too. And salt. Now olive oil. I have a special one. And it's from Les Beaux in Provence. Now, some leaves. It's a nice butter lettuce. Just a little bit of dressing on the leaves first. And then you do an artful arrangement of leaves on a platter. And this salad goes in stages. A bed of lettuce. Now, other ingredients, potatoes, much disputed. Some say they don't belong, but I think they're great in salade niçoise because they give some real substance. These are nice little red potatoes, and they're just cooked. Now what's going to look good next to them? Some green beans. And I'm just dressing each thing separately because I want each thing to have its own distinct taste. These are blanched, they're still slightly crisp. These are cooked artichoke hearts, cooked by me. Greasy job. Now some tomatoes. These are nice cherry tomatoes. Hard boiled eggs. Some red onion. The tuna and anchovy debate is I don't think worth debating. They're both from the Mediterranean. They fish tuna in the Mediterranean and they get anchovies in the Mediterranean. So to me, they're both correct. I would use fresh tuna, though, if I were adding it at all, not tinned tuna. Some olives. One last round of fleur de sel because it's my favorite salt. And pepper. Nice big brown. That's a great summer salad and a great summer soup from the south of France and from the center. Now I'm heading north for something warm and wintry. Beef carbonade. Beef cooked in beer. France city tour, going from city to city. Vichy, Nice, and now let's go north. I'm making a carbonade de boeuf, which is a beef stew cooked in beer. Carbonade are these little strands of meat. They're cut like this. It comes from the word char grilled in Italian, although this is obviously not char grilled. Just putting in a drop of olive oil to prevent my butter from burning. The beef gets browned first. So that's the usual beginning for any French stew of this kind. I'm using this dish because it's partly cooked on the stove top and then it goes in the oven. You could use a saute pan or a big Dutch oven would be ideal. The beef has to get nice and brown on all sides because that's where the flavor is, in the caramelization of the meat juices. So as they get nice and dark like that, just remove them and work in batches so you don't overcrowd the pan. If you overcrowd, then they start steaming. 
The other essential ingredient in Kalmanad is onion. Onions, beer, and beef. So this can come out. Now I'm going to add the onions right to this. Now, I'm going to make a little roux in here that will thicken the dish at the end. So a tablespoon of sugar, it's just a little bit to help caramelization. And a couple of tablespoons of flour. I need stock and I need beer. This is a funny order of things just deglazing with the stock, beef stock. If you're using bought beef stock, make sure that you don't season too much first because it's always very salty. And get a bouquet garni to throw in here. Leek leaves, put bay leaves inside, a bit of thyme, some parsley, even just the stems. A bouquet garni is a little bundle of herbs. Now for the beer, this is a French beer, but you can use anything. Something strong is good. Two cups of beer and a little bit of vinegar. Thinking back to the brown sugar, vinegar and brown sugar make a kind of, not sweet sour, but it's that kind of exotic thing that's moving into Germanic tastes. If you think of cabbage with brown sugar and vinegar, and those, those are very northern tastes. Just a spoonful. And now, the meat can all go back in. Slap on a lid. And now this can go in the oven. And I have the oven to 325. It's quite a low oven. It should be low and slow so that the meat cooks until it's really soft. Nothing fast. Just leave that in peace for a while. Oh, um, oh, 6,000 pounds. I would serve it with mashed potatoes. A nice big pile to soak up all these gorgeous brown juices. That is so good, I'm not leaving the north. Next, I'm making an Alsatian onion tart. Whenever I get homesick for France, I get out a big traditional cookbook and start cooking my way through. Sometimes I have to improvise, but that's okay. The spirit is there. Now I'm gonna make an Alsatian onion tart with a little twist. This is how I make tarts all the time. I know it looks very rustic, but I like it like that. And sometimes when you have a leftover piece of pastry, you just can't deal with pushing it into a pan and making it all tidy. So I just roll it out flat and slap it on a baking sheet, and then I make a topping. Creme fraiche, baking. Onions. I'm just going to cut the bacon into lardon, which means shorter pieces of bacon. Now the onion, even the method is simple, gets thinly sliced. You don't have to do any fancy chopping. No measurements required either. You have to eyeball the thickness level, that's it. A couple of spoonfuls of creme fraiche. Use sour cream if you don't have creme fraiche. So all the way out to the edges. So I've got all these nice threads of onion. And you don't want too much. I may not even use it all. Just scatter them over lightly. And these are going to get all 
curled up in a little brown, that's all right too. And then the bacon, and ditto the bacon. Keep it just scattered here and there, because you want it in every little bite. I'm just going to cut it into squares afterwards. And now, the bacon is salty, but I'm still going to put a little tiny bit on top. Very judiciously. And pepper. The oven's at 400, and it probably needs about 20 minutes. I love this tart. It looks so rustic and effortless, which it is. A shellfish sauce from the Loire served on fish mousseline. Vichyssoise, a smooth, chilled leek and potato soup inspired by the town of Vichy. Salade niçoise with olives, egg, tomatoes, and haricots verts, his classic niece. In the north, Flemish influences make beer special, and it's great for stewing beef, as in carbonade de boeuf. And from Strasbourg, onion tart, all the rage, and this is the easiest one I've ever made. Hmm. Where should I go next? Bordeaux, the Alps, Rhone, Languedoc. 